Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophia Kerr. And if you're new here, I am on a postpartum weight loss journey. And right now I have been playing around with a keto diet and it's been really helping me with my weight loss. A keto diet really encourages you to use a lot of whole foods, obviously higher fat meats, no processed foods, no sugar, no alcohol. So that being said, it requires a lot of prep and a lot of planning. So my new thing is to plan meals a week at a time. This video, I'm going to be explaining how I plan my meals and then how I prep them and how I stay really prepared so that I can have as much success as possible on this keto diet. The first step before I start anything is I create a menu. I sit down with my husband and we talk about our meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next seven days. This menu is not set in stone, but it's a really, really good jumping off point. There is like nothing worse than when you're super hungry or you don't have any ideas and you're on a strict keto diet. So I found it really, really helpful to like give myself ideas ahead of time so that when the time comes, I am like ready to go and I have something that's really satisfying. I feel like when you're not prepared, you're like so prone to like making bad choices or cheating and you're trying so hard to do this really great diet, but you're falling short because you didn't plan. So that's why I came up with making a menu for a whole week. I wanna make sure that I'm using everything that's already in my fridge and freezer and I incorporate it into the menu so there's nothing that's like left in there or nothing goes to waste. I hate wasting food. I hate when produce goes bad. So I always make sure that I check and see what I have and incorporate that into my menu items. Also living in Hawaii, I've had to learn how to be really, really strategic with grocery shopping. Everything is imported so it's so expensive. So I love, love, love buying my meat and my produce at cost but that means buying in bulk. So I need to make sure that when it comes to produce, I'm using things on my menu multiple times. So I'll just try to make sure that I'm keeping all these things in mind. For example, if I'm gonna buy lettuce, I'm gonna make sure that salad is on my menu almost every single day because I know that I'm going to have probably three to five days worth of lettuce and I don't want it to rot. Also with meat, because it's so cheap at Costco, I love buying the meat in bulk. I portion it out and I stick it into the freezer so that I don't have to go to the grocery store on a daily basis and I always have meat at a great cost. And because we're on a high fat diet, I'm always kind of choosing the same meats, you know, dark meat chicken, pork, lamb, higher fat fish, and they have all these things at Costco. So I know that I'm going to be using them. So I feel so comfortable buying a lot and then portioning it and keeping it for later. Another important strategy for my menu is that I wanna make sure that I have a variety. I know that I'm gonna be having chicken probably three times in the week. I try to space it out so I'm not having chicken two days in a row. I don't wanna be eating the same thing over and over again because that's when you get bored and that's when you cheat. So again, making sure that you are strategic when you're placing different things is another key factor into making a menu. Eventually you start to find meals that you really, really like and that you really enjoy and that you don't remind repeating often. Like my husband and I love sriracha chicken. It's this simple chicken thigh recipe that I just use like garlic, salt and pepper oil and sriracha, but we love it and we probably have it twice a week. And so I'm definitely putting it on my menu multiple times. And that won't happen overnight, but eventually you'll have meals that you're like, oh, I want that. My husband and I have a few of those and we have like our little names for them like sriracha chicken or we love lamb with mustard and we call it mustard lamb. So you'll see on the menu that I have sriracha chicken and mustard lamb multiple times because we love it and we know those are great for us. They're satisfying and eventually you will find those. And you have to just keep experimenting and trying different meats with different vegetables and different sauces and different seasonings and eventually you'll just like totally find your menu and you'll have staples. And then you can just kind of like stick in different meals um, on different days. And then the menu just starts to like so easy, just like flows, like it just gets so much easier over time. Like the more you do it. And once you find these meals that are your staples, it's like, you're only coming up with like a few new ideas a week and it gets really, really easy. All right, after we make our menu, the next step in my meal prep for the week is to make a grocery list. Again, because I live in Hawaii, this requires a lot of strategy for me. I go through my list and all of the produce that I'm using more than one time in a week, I will get at Costco. And then produce that I need a smaller portion of, I will get at Safeway. So I make two lists. I make a Costco list and then I make a Safeway list. And then I look at my menu and whatever items I don't have in my fridge and freezer, I write the remaining items down on my list and I will get all those things at the store. So I literally have a week's worth of groceries in my fridge so at any time when I want to make anything on this menu I have 
all of the items. It is so easy this way. Having all the food up front sets you up for success. I'm telling you, if you have something on your menu and you don't have the items in the fridge, when it comes time to make it, you're gonna get pissed off if you're, especially if you're hungry, you're probably gonna cheat. So it's so important that you write this menu and then you buy the items at the store that are on your menu so that you have them to make that meal. It does require some strategy and some planning, but once you actually do these two pieces, the rest falls into place and it's so much easier. Another thing that I've really grown to love is frozen vegetables. Do not knock frozen vegetables. It does not make you like cheap or like a bad cook if you use frozen vegetables. Number one, when they process frozen vegetables, they pick them at their peak season. Sometimes they're better quality than the fresh produce you might find anyway. And they taste great. They still have all their nutrients. And honestly, having frozen meat and frozen vegetables makes keto so accessible. Let's say you didn't have time to plan. You literally have keto-friendly vegetables and keto-friendly meats in your freezer to pull them out and defrost at any time and make a keto meal like that. So it is literally your best friend. Don't feel ashamed if you're getting frozen vegetables. They literally will save you in the nick of time and they're great things to incorporate in the middle of the week. Especially for us living on an island, produce is so expensive. So sometimes frozen vegetables are the best way to go. For example, cauliflower on the island is like $4 a pound. If you wanna get ahead of cauliflower at Safeway, it's like $20. On keto, you're not having any rice or high carbs. So we love making cauliflower rice and Costco has the most amazing cauliflower rice frozen it's portioned it's perfect so literally there's no shame in my frozen vegetable game I guarantee you it'll save you some time and some money if you incorporate it into your menu you always want to make sure that you have access to all the flavors that you really love. I know my husband and I really love garlic and onion and different things. So I always make sure that I have those things on hand. We buy five dozen eggs at a time and I buy a big pack of bacon and we just store it into the freezer and I just have it on hand whenever we need it. If you're ever really, really hungry and you didn't prep anything and you just like can't wait to make a full meal, that one of the greatest, most satisfying keto meals to make that only takes five minutes is bacon and eggs and avocado. So it's it's a really good idea to make sure that you have those items so you can make that like on the drop of a hat. It's just, it's, it's a lifesaver. Again, set yourself up for success and set yourself up to make meals that are flavorful and delicious so that you feel satisfied and happy with the diet that you're doing. It's all about sustainability. So if you're eating like plain dry chicken and broccoli that has no flavor, you're gonna get bored, you're gonna cheat. So you need to set yourself up to make flavorful, good dishes so that you're staying on track. Okay, so once you made your menu, you made your grocery list, you went grocery shopping, now comes time for the meal prep. And why Leah and I have really come up with this strategy, and I actually think that it would work for anybody, but because we have a newborn baby, this has really, really worked for us. So every day, the night before, we always look at our menu and see what the next day is. So for example, Monday, our meals are sriracha chicken and mustard lamb. So we know that we need chicken thigh and lamb out of the freezer. So I make sure that I take out chicken thigh and thaw it out, and that I take out the rack of lamb and thaw it out ahead of time. I also make sure that there's bacon in the fridge so that we can have it for breakfast, and I always place that into the fridge. So the night before, I take out the meats that we need for the next day so that it's ready to go when I wanna prep it. The next day of our actual meal prep, I do all the prep in the morning. The baby wakes up so early, but she usually, after a couple hours, goes down for her first nap, and this is when Wailea and I prep both meals for the day. So when we know that lunch is sriracha chicken, I prep and season my zucchini and I dress my chicken. I put it all into a tray and I cover it with foil and I put it into the fridge. So then literally when I'm ready for lunch, all I have to do is take it out of the fridge, preheat the oven, put it in there and then we can eat it. The rack of lamb, all I have to do is season it and sear it. So I don't prep that meat ahead of time, but I do make sure that it's thaw, but I prep the Brussels sprouts. So I cut them, season them, and then put them into the fridge. That when I'm ready, all I have to do is put it on a tray and put it into the oven. So we do all the prep in the morning. And if we as a team spend an hour of doing prep in the morning, all the meals are seasoned and ready to go. And then it literally takes like five minutes of prep to make the actual meal when we're ready for the meal time. And then all we have to do 
do is wait for the cooking time. I've noticed that when we prep the meals before lunch and then prep the meals before dinner, we're spreading out our time where it's like, oh, 45 minutes prepping for lunch and then, oh, an hour prepping for dinner. When we can consolidate all of that time to one time in the morning while the baby's napping and we get it all out of the way. So that way, if, if time runs away from us, if we get busy, the meals are prepped. All we have to do is shove it into the oven. So by 10 a.m., I've literally prepped lunch and dinner. We're all ready to go. We're ready for breakfast. And I don't have to think about it for the rest of the day. Once I'm done with the meal prep, I do look at the meals for the next day and I will take out the meats that I need for the following day. So for Tuesday, we have salad and sausages. So I'll make sure that there's sausages out and then we're making rack of ribs for dinner. So I'll make sure that the ribs are out and I will let those defrost overnight. I like to take the meat out a day before because I think it's better for it to thaw on the fridge. However, if you're running low on time, you can thaw it out at room temperature or run it under water and let it thaw out. But you do need to eat it that day. The great thing about thawing things out in the fridge slowly is that if you decide not to use it, you can put it back in the freezer. But if you thaw something out on the counter, it's not safe to freeze again so that's just like a little tip if you didn't know that there are like food safety standards for thawing out meat and what's safe for you to eat and refreeze make sure you're paying attention to that just so that you're easy on your stomach and you're not eating something that's maybe a little bit dangerous so I'm literally setting myself up the day before planning and prepping so that the next day it's easier for me you can set yourself up so well you can do so many things ahead of time that save so much time and save you from cheating and making poor choices. The next step for like good meal prep is to account for snacking. And this means really, really thinking ahead. When people get bored, they like to eat. So it's important that you have snack foods that are keto friendly. If you're bored and you want a snack, you're not gonna make like a whole rack of lamb like to snack on like one little rib. You want something that you can grab and you can eat and you can stuff in your face when you're bored or when you're hungry and when you need something like right away. So you need to create a list of snack foods that are on your diet and work for you and then prep them ahead of time for success. Good keto snacks for me are like hard boiled eggs, avocado, cashews. I love sparkling water. It keeps my mouth busy and the bubbles kind of get in my stomach and like make me feel pretty satisfied. Sliced cucumber is a good one or any kind of crudite that you can kind of munch on. But again, you wanna make sure that you're prepping these ahead of time. So that means maybe having hard boiled eggs in the fridge or making sure that you have four or five ripe avocados so that when you're hungry, you can slice one in half, salt and pepper, and just eat it with a spoon. Roasting some nuts ahead of time and putting them in a Tupperware. Having sparkling water in the fridge so that it's ready to drink. Literally something as small as slicing cucumber ahead of time will save you so much agony later on. It is so important to anticipate your hunger, especially when you're coming off of crazy cravings like carbs and sugar, you're gonna be hungry. Until you really start to find a flow in a diet, you're gonna have cravings and, and again, people eat when they're bored. So you really need to be prepared for that. Also with my husband, I had been dying for him to do keto with me for so long, but he is such a little snacky snacker. So it's so important for me to have different snacks that are readily available for him around the house that will satisfy him. I'm actually gonna make a whole other video just on keto friendly snacks, but that's just like a little insight and a good tip to meal planning just so that in between meals you have something and you're ready. I think overall for the meal plan, you just set yourself up, save yourself time and save yourself some stress. Strategy yields success. I swear to you that if you just take a little bit of planning, it takes out so much guesswork and so much frustration for the rest of the week by just a little bit of planning. And if you want people to participate with you or you're super, super busy and you wanna be successful in this diet, all it takes is a little bit of meal prep. I mean, when I sit down and make that menu, it takes me 15 minutes, my grocery list, five minutes. If you can spend an hour a week planning for a whole week of success, wouldn't you do it? My favorite phrase recently has been a failure to plan is a plan for a failure. So don't plan to fail, plan to win and make a menu. I hope that was helpful. That's how I do it. I think that there are obviously so many different ways that you can meal prep and everyone has something that's gonna work for them, but that really works for me. I find that just planning a little bit in advance and then doing little bits every morning really helps me stay on track. I especially love it when it comes time to eat something and I'm like, I am literally so stoked on myself that I did this for myself. Like help you help yourself. 
And also this prep helps me help my husband, helps us all be healthy and it can help you too. If you haven't already, please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to be putting up so many videos coming up about keto friendly everything, sauces, snacks, desserts. So make sure that you stay tuned. I upload every Sunday and every Wednesday. So hit the notification bell so that you are notified when I'm uploading so you don't miss anything. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, anything, please leave them in the comments below. Let me know. Let me know what your challenges are. Let's come up with things together. Let's exchange recipes. Keep me posted. So I love to hear from you. This Sunday, my video is gonna be a little bit different. I'm going to be doing a vlog style video. I'm gonna be visiting my sister Julia in Texas. So I'm so excited to share my experiences visiting my family with you guys. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time.